Hello everyone, you are watching Campus Channel and we're here today with EdEc Business School. We're going to talk about their MSc in Strategy Consulting and Digital Transformation. We have the Program Director, Christine Kwan, as well as a graduate, Lars Vendel, here to take your questions. But first, we're going to start with the pitch. All right, Christine, we tried to get Lars to do the pitch, but it looks it like it's going to be, it didn't work. It didn't so work. it's you. You have 60 seconds flat. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Go. Hello, everyone. The MSc in Strategy Consulting and Digital Transformation is a one year program that is hosted at EDEC campus in Lille in the northwestern of Europe. It lasts one full academic year from September to May. It is intended for people that have a four-year bachelor degree and that want to make an impact on business, society and the world at large. And it is also focused around strategic thinking. That's why we deliver this program. We want to make bright minds brighter. And we think that strategic thinking is the skill that is needed most in our very turbulent world. How do we do that? We deliver teaching and learning in a very special way. We coach, we advise, we partner with our students, and we make them fit for business. All right, I'm that's a... perfect timing, great very job. nice. All right, we're gonna move on to the face-to-face. -face. Please remember to keep sending us your questions. They're gonna show up right there. So let's take the first one here. Uh, Lars, will you take this question for us, sure. please? Why do this program in Lille? Is it the main digital hub of France? Is it a major source of employment for international students? So what do you think? Why did you do this program in Lille? I did this program in Lille because it was offered in Lille uh, at edX campus. Um, I would not say Lille is a digital hub as such, but for this program it doesn't have to be a digital hub. Lille is perfectly located in Europe because it's very close to Paris, but it's also very close to other major economic uh, areas like the London area, Brussels, uh, Germany is not far away. So it's, it's perfectly located in the center of Europe and that's, I think, what makes it unique. Right, being at the center of northwestern Europe makes it an ideal spot you know, to develop a career in internationally. I, I would also like to add that there's a digital hub uh, called Euro Technologies in Lille that is a very uh, famous uh, source of innovation and that spreads the, you know, the word of digitalization everywhere. So indeed, but the focus of the MSc is about strategic thinking, forward thinking. The digital component is not an add-on, it's everywhere, yeah. you know? Digitalization is impacting every business. It is causing major trouble to a lot of businesses today, so we want to help businesses with our digital transformation. That's, that's the meaning of digital transformation. And in terms of jobs for international students, the second part of the student's question? Yeah, jobs in the UK, I mean, whatever the situation will be, mm -hmm. Luxembourg, Holland, um, Germany, uh, Nordic countries. Yeah. We have a couple of graduates that, you know, are in Amsterdam. We have somebody um, from Russia that is doing an Orange graduate program in Amsterdam. We have people that have joined Deloitte group in Luxembourg. We have Ireland, for example. Ireland, uh, Salesforce, Salesforce yeah. is hiring a lot of our graduates uh, from an international background as sales engineers or software engineers. So it's yes. a good regional location to find jobs yeah. around. Yeah, it is. It is. All right, let's take the next question here. Christine, will you read sure. this, please? Where is the most focus placed in this program? Finance, HR, or AI? Well, as I said, as I said, the core of the program that we deliver is strategic thinking. Around strategic thinking, you will find key skills like creativity, adaptability, <laughs> um, and what we want to equip our students with, you know, is a set of core knowledge uh, in four types of expertise, that is strategy, management, operations, and finance. 
And then we want them to develop more specific skills in the concentrations that are offered that I may want to develop um, in a minute. But the core of our program is forward thinking. We are analyzing the past, relying on the present in order to invent the future. So creativity is an interesting aspect that you mentioned. How, how do you cultivate and creativity. teach creativity for consulting? We don't teach creativity as such, but we expose students to a variety of situations, life case studies, real uh, company issues. Yeah. Uh, we develop innovation challenges, finance challenges, strategy challenges. I remember we had a business modeling case where we tried to design a new business model uh, or another part where we, where we elaborated on future strategies for, for big corporations in Europe, mm -hmm. um, where it really was applying the toolbox, but also coming up with creative solutions. I think you cannot really teach creativity, but you can learn to question the status quo and develop it further. That's right. correct. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. We, okay. we, we challenge our yeah. students. We, we do not like you know to teach an academically ready uh, set of core concepts but our main added value is about training our students challenging them exposing them to real life situations sorry i took a peek at the next question it looks like it's for you christine yes it's about admissions yeah about admissions um for students with an engineering background, will the prerequisites be an issue to adapt strategy corporate finance? Do you offer maybe courses to catch up? I am not going to lie. Um, we need some basic knowledge of strategy of financial accounting and of corporate finance, but we do offer courses to catch up because we are partnering with Harvard Business Publishing and we have all of these uh, tools uh, ready online for students to catch up. So that, that is possible. But I, what I would like to stress, and, and Lars, you will agree with me, is that some pre-professional uh, experience yeah. is, is a plus because when we place our students, we need to rely on some pre you know, uh, preset yeah. uh, knowledge and skills. Yeah, and uh, Christine, it also helps you in the class because it's very interactive classes and you discuss real life situations. And if you can refer to your past experiences that you've gained in internships or anything, it, it makes it easier for you to really contribute and uh, follow the line of thought in the, in the discussions. So, Christine, we were talking earlier about the M1, where you offer yeah. a more general management degree True. or master's so that students can then pursue this master two. Correct. So, who would you advise that to take that master one before entering this master two or applying to this master two? Any student with a business or non-business related background. We welcome students with a marketing background, with a tourism background, with an engineering background, with a medical background. Uh, studies background at times, I mean, it's not, you know, the majority of cases, but students who come to M1 can really have no pre-knowledge uh, uh, or previous knowledge of business-related topics. Of course, it's a plus. As, as Lars said, we are, you know, focusing on experiential knowledge too. So we need um, something to start with, but I would really... Um, will encourage students to maybe look at the whole master's program. The MSc in strategy is the step forward. All right, let's take the next question here, sure. Lars. Will you read this, yes. please? Consulting is such a broad field. What kinds of jobs does this master actually prepare us for? Yeah, I, uh, being a consultant, I really love this question. Um, because <laughs> everyone no. wants to know, what does a consultant do? <laughs> yeah, <Yes. laughs> because, uh, no, it really, I would say, you have two parts. You have, a, you have the basis, which is the, the toolbox that I referred already mm -hmm. to, where you really learn to apply this mindset you need as a consultant of really questioning issues and really practical tools, be it strategic analysis, be it financial statement analysis, valuation, investment decisions, these really hard facts. Yeah. What you then can do, and maybe Christine, you can go yeah. into more detail about it, is you can choose between four minors, which is pretty cool because it allows you to 
specialize yourself and prepare yourself for potential future directions. Correct. So we translate consulting into strategy consulting, management consulting, operations consulting and finance consulting. So finance consulting is very broad. It goes from M&A analysis, you know, due diligence to private equity to corporate finance, management control or auditing. Uh, but as far as consulting, I mean, the core business of consulting is, is concerned, we offer an intensive track that prepares students to join strategy consulting firms. And there we develop nice tools like Nisi, Minto, the Pyramid, uh, Structure Tree, etc., etc. Okay, so before we move on very quickly, Lars, you are a graduate of this program. What are you working today? What is your job? Well, I'm working as a consultant at Lufthansa Consulting, mm -hmm. which is a specialized firm uh, in aviation, consulting airports and airlines around the world. And there I can apply the tool set and the mindset that I got in, in our program every day. So I can really emphasize on this question that for becoming a consultant in whatever field of expertise, this program prepares you very, very well. All right, next question, Christine. Next question, at one point do we choose our minor? Do we have to know our specialization when we apply? You don't go for an M2 program, you know, without any previous idea of what you want to do. I mean, at this point in time, when you have a, an M1 level uh, or a bachelor's degree, um, I think you have slight idea. If you don't, well, we will help because we have a strong, you know, career advice uh, department. Now, we want you to choose your minor before um, we start the school year, but we allow students to change their minds, uh, considering, you know, maybe the content of such and such uh, classes or the presentations made by companies at the beginning of the year. We have consulting days, you know, throughout the year. We have company forums. We have lots of different opportunities to have contacts with companies. So that can refine people's choices. Now, for the minor in finance, we ask the students to have previous experience. Uh, six months uh, is a minimum, you know, to really make the most of the finance minor. And do students have to pick a minor or can they pick and choose classes from each minor and customize? Mm, right. Well, that's a very good question. No, they, they pick a minor, mm -hmm. but they can, if their schedule allows them to do so, go to other classes, you know, and just uh, take the pulse or, or listen or get interested in, in, in the subjects. Because we have developed in the uh, minor uh, called Digital Operations a couple of classes on blockchain, artificial intelligence, and you know, these are very uh, topical issues at the moment. So people can go if their schedule allows them to do so, but we ask them to validate the minor in full. And so for you, Lars, what was your minor? What did you choose to do? Well, I chose at that time uh, strategic analysis and business intelligence. I was maybe a perfect example of uh, not being extremely decisive on that part because uh, in the first week on campus I also struggled because I knew I wanted to start in consulting afterwards but I thought maybe the skills that I can learn in the other minor are very very helpful for me as well and then I had a few discussions also with Christine on what might be the best selection I chose uh, the, the strategic analysis one and became a consultant afterwards so it worked. Very good. All right, let's take the next question here, Lars. Will you read this, yeah. please? And what businesses or firms do you use as examples of doing relevant and impactful work in digital transformation? Well, we can take the example of the uh, digital transformation seminar yeah. that we conduct with one of our partners, uh, that is to say Capgemini Invent. Uh, what we do is work on real-life cases. Um, if I quote a few names, uh, Pernod Ricard, uh, Petit Bateau, um, Volkswagen, Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, we ha in, in the framework of this digital transformation seminar, we ask students to develop a digital transformation strategy with change management maps, with uh, proficiency, digital proficiency uh, grids, uh, etc., etc. And we, you know, currently and, and, and every every single year, add new cases to our library of cases to be able to decipher and better apprehend the stakes of digital transformation. But uh, as I said, uh, digital is everywhere nowadays. So 
you know, whatever the case, whatever the situation, whatever the issue, there is a digital uh, component. So yeah. for you, Lars, were these business cases helpful whenever you were studying, when you had these case studies? Was it helpful? Did you actually learn from them? or? Yes, they were very helpful because they train you for this consulting mindset because they don't present you the problem. They just present you a case and then you have to figure out the problem yourself, sketch it and then work on a solution. So they were very helpful. And what I would also like to add to, to Christina's statement is that we from time to time had guest lectures of consultants coming to the campus and talking about what they are doing, what are their current challenges in their projects at the moment, especially mm. when it comes to digitalization, because that's such a hot topic also in the consulting world. Um, that was also very insightful for, for us as students, because we could also understand how people in real life are dealing with digitalization problems and questions. All right, well, it's time for our first break. It's time for Three Words Max Taboo. Our guests have three words to describe their program and they get three phrases to explain the choice of each word, except this is three words max taboo, so we here at Campus Channel have also chosen three words that are forbidden. So if they use any of them, there will be a buzzer. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, what's your first word? My first word is form. What's the first word? It's a verb. Oh, it's, it's a verb. Form. Oh, we form. train okay. students to form okay. a foundation knowledge of strategy and strategy related issues. Okay. My second word is perform. We train students to use these foundation knowledge and skills in real life situations, in company challenges, in any type of school exercises that is highly inductive. Uh -huh. We act as again coaches and advisor and my third word is transform with these knowledge and skills students put together a profile that is highly employable in the market and i can quote a few examples who have now works at bcg dubai i can quote uh, lars who is a very good example of a consulting uh, success right in the real world i can quote our russian students george who joined the graduate program at orange i can quote many other students um matteo matteo arienti went to uh, um, to luxembourg to join deloitte as uh, a consultant in banking strategy you see so we have a variety of outlets here that um, are really the living proof of the added value we bring to our students. Lots of success stories. Yes. And I see you're putting creativity into practice with your three words, Max. You didn't get any buzzwords. That's so right. Very good. Thank you very much. All right, let's get back to the questions here. Lars, will you read this, please? Yes. Since this program is all about digital transformation, what makes this program in particular innovative? So what do you think? Well. First of all, I would say still that the heart of the program is strategy, yeah. accepting that digital transformation is everywhere and you yeah. cannot define or shape or reshape a strategy without thinking digital today. That is maybe the framing uh, sentence for this question. But what makes it particularly innovative for me is the teaching approach because you fully apply also uh, digital channels in your learning, be it uh, like business games, online business games, online studies, um, be it the, the full case study approach, be it... Uh, yeah, the, the inductive methods that right. we use, you know, um, I mean, partnership is, is a, an attitude yeah. in our master's degree. We're not only partners with our students to help them make a career, we partners partner with them to help them develop solutions to you know, innovative solutions to case studies. So, uh, for example, some groups this year worked on the future of the sugar industry or the future of the cereals industry, yeah. you see. And, and this in partnership with students and corporations. So that, that is a sign that, you know, we are in, in, in a different world today. You know, uh, hierarchy, top-down issues no longer have their place. We we are establishing a co-construction while you know uh, giving our students the opportunity to move forward to advance their knowledge and to 
um, perfect their skills. All right, let's take the next question here. It looks like it's for Lars. Ah. Yes. Is there anything you would have done differently in the program if you had to go again? Something else you would have focused on more? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what would I have done differently? I think with the program that I chose at that time, I would again choose it as it was. Knowing the program now, I would maybe even go for this uh, new digital miner because all these blockchain artificial intelligence questions are questions that I see in my professional everyday life now as being highly relevant. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad but also sad that mm. uh, EDEC has um, integrated it now, but I couldn't uh, select it. Um, the second part of the question. Was there anything that you would focus on more? Is there a particular subject? Well, maybe I could have uh, focused more on learning French. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and as I one. learned today, uh, again, uh, mm -hmm. and substantiated my, my language skill even more. But program-wise, I think not. So in terms of learning French, did you have an opportunity to learn French at the school during this program? Yes, definitely. There are uh, free and compulsory uh, French classes. So mm -hmm. you, do, you do a test in the beginning as an international student that is ranking you in different levels and then you have um, classes throughout the entire year plus uh, there are also platforms for international students where you can exchange and really and practice your French so as I did at that time but I didn't use it again so apart from the compulsory classes do you feel like you could really learn French in in the short time that you were at EDEC it's just September to May is that correct that mm -hmm. is correct yeah. I think that depends very much on uh, on yourself and your willingness also to invest Right? So learning a language is, is of course a function of effort and then of course also practice. So I would say there are a lot of opportunities where you can apply it, be it in, in Lille as a, as a city, so you of course also live there, um, but also at, at the university. So I know uh, with Christine, also with Christine's assistant, I, I try it from time to time just to, to speak French or to write short emails in French just to, to practice it. So yes, there are definitely opportunities. Mm -hmm. All right, next question, Christine. What are the current trends you see for the future of business consultants should be appraised of and how do you prepare students to work with that? That's a very good question. The future trends are about digital transformation for sure because this is an issue that you know current executives are trying to come to grips with we know that digital is 20 percent tech and 80 percent people so i would definitely stress the people component and what we're doing in our master's degree with our students is having this double you know general specialization approach and then general again we're opening uh, the scope of business issues to be able to make our students agile, intellectually speaking, to be able to make them ready to take decisions in an uncertain environment and to be able to make them more creative because, you know, uh, thinking out of the box, making things happen is, are not just buzzwords, they are real life uh, uh, dilemmas and I was talking to corporate um, executives lately who said they have difficulty recruiting people with a broad mind able to grasp you know issues that are not completely um, certain uh, able to make decisions in an ambiguous setting so cross-cultural uh, competency creativity agility adaptability these are the skills that we are working on and that will be the challenge of tomorrow. All right, anything to add to that, Lars? Yeah, I would add that maybe in the consulting world as such, I feel that also the scope of work is slightly changing. It's not just delivering a concept, put it on pa in PowerPoint on paper and then you move. No, it's more moving also towards fast implementation. So delivering minimum viable products, early prototypes, very fast, very early. Mm -hmm. And that is also something uh, Christine mentioned, agility, where this program prepares you very well for. In a, in a time boxed environment, giving, providing a deliverable that is actually useful. Correct. All right, next question, Christine. How many students do you typically have per year on this course? How are the courses scheduled throughout the day? How are the courses articulated, mostly lectures or group work? How many students? Well, we've grown tremendously in the past because we've been offering more minors. So the current number is 250 divided into four. 
minors, we usually have classes of 60 to 80 divided by two according to the requirements of the course, but we mostly do group work. We, we don't do deductive learning, we do inductive learning. That is to say, we start from the case and we induce theory instead of doing the opposite. And very often, you know, the, con the co-construction spirit an attitude that I was talking about is brought about through inductive learning. Blended learning is something that I introduced as well very early. And I'd like to say that I um, form, I, I set up continuous improvement committees with my students in order to continuously improve the program and the deliverables. And so, Lars, tell us more about the rhythm of the schedule. Is it really intense? Is it manageable? What, what was your experience? Well, I, it is intense because it's a it's a lot of uh, of topics that fit into into these nine months. The uh, course are usually taught in blocks, so you have uh, let's say a full week morning and afternoon lectures on on one on one topic or time dedicated for group work. But yes, it, it is an intense program, of course. Mm. All right, let's take the next question here, uh, Lars. Who are the leading business partners your site mentions have contributed to developing this program? So maybe okay. for Christine? Yes, so we, our historical partner is Capgemini Consulting at the time, Invent nowadays, that is helping us develop the consulting minor. We work with a, a company um, that is uh, the leading producer of yeast as far as the strategic analysis and uh, competitive intelligence minor is concerned. And we work with uh, other consulting companies for um, our two other minors, that is the finance and digital operations, but as you know, um, not sponsors of mm -hmm. the program but regular uh, partners uh, i can quote a few if you wish but i would I'd like to say if the site mentions a couple of uh, strategy consulting firms is that we have developed this intensive track uh, which uh, enables us to be a target school for mckinsey nowadays which has established uh, relationships with bcg bain uh, Mm, Oliver Wyman, uh, LEK, Kia Partners, uh, uh, Deloitte, Monitor, etc., etc. And this particular intensive track only concerns, you know, a few of the students that are ready to go into consulting. Now, strategy consulting is not only about strategy consulting firms, it's also about joining global strategy departments. And we have students joining Danone or KPMG this year. And so what are these partners' contributions to the curriculum whenever they They provide participate? lectures, mm -hmm. they provide uh, master classes, they provide, they give us some money at times to develop new classes, they provide cases, case studies for our students, they invite us to uh, share um, happy moments, um, they provide challenges. We had a couple of uh, winners in the KPMG challenge and we also worked with HEC in the Bain Challenge. Um, so they provide a, a whole you know, series of, of potential benefits that students can take advantage of. And maybe Lars, you could um, well, come now up with your give and take uh, motto that um, you mentioned earlier on. Well, yes, I would say the school, of course, has a lot of contacts uh, and you didn't even mention the full network of al alumni and the career center with all these contacts. But again, for me, it's always like a give and take when you are in this business school environment, right? So the school edX can be your platform, can facilitate your networking, can facilitate your placement, can coach you in application processes in getting you in contact. But of course, you are at the end the one going there, you are the one placing yourself, leveraging the support of EDEC. And I think that is something that, especially if you want to go into this highly competitive field of strategy consulting, is something that has to be very clear to every student. It requires a lot of personal effort and EDEC can only be your very, very, very supportive platform. All right, very good. Lars, will you read the next question, please? Yes. Can you tell me more about the business games element of the program, please? Oh yes, I can, because <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed it. We had a few actually. Um, I can uh, cite an example of the strategic analysis and business intelligence minor where we were a group of five people 
uh, competing with different student groups uh, running a globally operating production firm and we we were in charge of managing across several business years um, dimensions of marketing finance operations and uh, sales in three different geographies so it was highly complex uh, we we spent afternoons and afternoons there dis discussing our decisions adjusting it analyzing the year end reports um, it was a really really cool experience that was a very very big central one mm -hmm. but it's also cool that a lot of courses i remember the change management yeah. class the organizational performance class that have integrated smaller online business games where you can directly apply learnings from the lecture and test so for example in change management when you've learned about a new methodology you can directly test it and you can test effects when you go left or right what effect does mm -hmm. it have so it's, mm -hmm. it makes the courses very very interactive and it's also a lot of fun, so I always enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, would you like to add anything to that, Christine? No, that's perfect. Okay. That's perfect. Lars, you are an excellent ambassador for the program. Thank that, you. <laughs> All right. that is for sure. Well, up next, we have time for one last break. Where are we headed? We're not quite sure, but we're going to find out with Final okay. Destination. All right, Lars, so I'm going to ask you okay. to draw a slip of paper for us there, please. <laughs> that one looks good. Okay, let's see. The best project of the year was... Okay, the best I cited already because it was the business game. That was mm -hmm. a great experience, but I can uh, also cite the second best, which was pretty cool. It was also in the, the business intelligence minor, a project where we developed a uh, political communication campaign for a large cereal producer and it was very interesting because it was a changing the mind it was not a consumer oriented communication campaign but it was a campaign of which measures on a political level can we take to shape political decisions so really lobbying opinion engineering something i've never thought of about before but it was it's just a perfect example of the way this program makes you think and for you, Christine, are there any standout projects from the past few years? Any standout performances by students well, with their projects? Well, uh, the, the, the um, winning positions, <laughs> you know, of our students in various challenges, external challenges, because we can always be, you know, very proud of what our do students are doing internally. But when they are confronted to other teams, other schools, on real life uh, cases, situation externally, well, that makes us even more proud. So the HC challenge was about Bain, uh, uh, propose, uh, Bain proposal, the, the KPMG challenge mm. of one team in, in, in one was super nice. We had this digital uh, certificate won by one of our teams on La Redoute project, which was to expand internationally thanks to digital tools. I have many sources of satisfaction. You know, this girl joining Danone Global Strategy lately, or KPMG Global Strategy lately, or Celine joining Roland Berger first shot. I mean, I'm you're like I'm a just, proud parent. I <laughs> am thrilled. I am just uh, fully satisfied, and I'm happy. When, when my students are happy, I'm happy. You see, this is the uh, type of relationship that we nurture. Okay, well, we have time for a few more questions here. Christine, will you read this, please? Oh, yes. Are there limited places per minor? How does the choosing process takes pl take place? There are limited places per minor. Um, I'm checking every CV. Um, students apply. We check, well, I do the checking of, of the CV content in relationship to the minor if there's discrepancy. I contact the students. That's when you know the uh, initial um, choosing process takes place, and then there's this one-month test in which students can change their mind. And there are limited places. Yes, to the extent to which you know uh, class capacity sure. is between 40 and 60 marks, we can go up to 80 in case of strong demand which was the case for the finance minor last year. Is that the most popular At the moment. minor? Okay. At the moment. Um, Any others that are more competitive th than others? Well, um, the minor that Lars chose is extremely uh, competitive. Um, it seems that the in-house consulting orientation that it has taken is, is very uh, appealing to students. And it's also broader, you know, because if you choose the consulting minor, you want to become an external 
external consultant, whereas if you choose the strategy, definition, and competitive intelligence minor, you have a lot of potential outlets. Yeah. So this one is very competitive. The finance uh, track is also very appealing. Yeah, and digital to a lesser extent because the tech guys uh, are more into um, digital technology and digital operations. And we find a lot of uh, our engineers, you know, our students with an engineering background mm -hmm. in the minor for digital operations. All right, let's take the next question here, Lars. What emphasis does this program place on entrepreneurship? Well, I would say it's not a program that is teaching you to be a good entrepreneur, but if you want to start up your own company, mm. the tools that you get are extremely helpful because what, what do you learn? You learn business modeling, you learn financial planning, you learn strategic thinking. That's all tools you need when you yeah. also want to, to start up your own company. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I would say that it's not, you know, our focus or our main um, objective to train entrepreneurs, but there are a couple of students who every year go into entrepreneurship yeah. or intrapreneurship, you know, or business development. Okay. And the next question here, um, Christine. What's required for the master project? Maybe Lars can tell me what he did for his, correct? Uh, okay. Lars. Yes, so maybe I can say that there are yeah. currently two to three possibilities. So the dissertation, which may lead to a PhD, and Lars will tell you more about this. The consulting project that is conducted with companies, real companies. So we deliver actionable prescriptions for companies in the framework of a consulting project with two to three students. And occasionally case studies can be written with professors on specific topics. Okay. Lars? So what did you do, Lars? I chose the dissertation. Uh, I worked on a tourism-related uh, topic, uh, tourism value chain related, um, because I saw this as a good foundation for a potential later PhD. And I also really wanted to, to deepen my knowledge and also apply a few academic tools. But for example, this consulting project, I can also I will highly recommend because a few of my classmates made did not have prior consulting experience and then chose to conduct this consulting project because they can cite it as a reference when they are in an application mm. process. So that's mm. actually also a very cool uh, lever. And so did any of the students from your group go on to do PhDs or to apply for PhDs? Well, not yet, I think. Not yet. Think. I think we have a few intentions. Yeah. Two to three students, yeah. maybe. And what, what fields would those PhDs be in? What kinds of PhDs could students pursue after this? One would be, if I think of our Australian friend, I would probably talk about um, HR and talent management, which can also be one outlet. Yeah. In your particular case, it's, it's mostly... It's strategic management, mm -hmm. so again. Yeah. But also, yeah. Actually, also finance is an option. It, it very much depends on your personal background, on your, on your experience. Yeah. But generally, the, the program prepares you yeah, for HR, strategic management, finance. Right, right. And I know of a few others who are very much interested in artificial intelligence and blockchain, which are you know, fields that are, are in high need exactly. or, of development. And that could be a source of added value for the MSc yeah. as well. All right, let's take this next question here, Christine. Yeah. Do you have statistics on how many students did secure a permanent contract before, yes, before graduation and also in how many months after graduation did 100% get full-time jobs in the previous years? Well, yes, um, we are living a very uh, enthusiastic period. I mean, consulting is, is, uh, uh, ranks very, very high. We had 90% of our students last year uh, secure a permanent contract before graduation. Um, I don't have the latest figures about the 100%, but I guess that between three to six months after graduation, that was the case. Um, as I said, you know, the um, market is, is very good. Uh, consulting is very uh, much praised by, by companies. And even if consulting is just a starting job, then we find that our students use it as a springboard yeah. to develop skills and join companies, the company of, of their dreams. So we have a very high rate of uh, conversion 
And this is uh, also thanks to our career center, which develops a program called Talent Identification and Career Development. And I cannot, you know, but mention the name of Florence yeah. D'Acosta, yeah. a career expert who does a fantastic job placing yes. all our students. Excellent. Well, that is all the time we have for questions. We want to finish with something nice, so it's time for the sweetest. <laughs> all right, Lars, very quickly, <laughs> what was your favorite question from the interview and why? My favorite question was the what consulting does the program prepare you for question because, um, again, it's your decision, right? The program equips you with a tool set, with a mindset, and allows you also in partnership with the, with the faculty, with the career center, to really work out your individual path you want to go. So again, putting in effort, leveraging edX as a platform, and then doing also what you personally want to do. All right, and for you, Christine? I think my favorite question was the same, but the second part of it, which uh, relates to the challenges that you know the consulting profession faces nowadays, I think that you know an excess of, of too much specialization is going to be detrimental to the profession. So consultants need to be able to be generalist um, to be able to grasp issues that are not only ambiguous but also complex and to this end a, a, a background a master's program that is broad uh, sufficiently broad but sufficiently you know specific at the same time providing students with a strong basis in business management and an acute knowledge of a specific area is I think the best choice of uh, that that can exist uh, to train students to face uh, tomorrow's issues and, and and again we have to realize that the world is very complex very uncertain and, and very fast moving all right so I good. wish good luck to everyone yes well thank you both very much for being here and sharing more insight about your program and thank you for joining us and sending us your questions. We'll see you again very soon right here on Campus Channel.